What's up, C. Will? How's it going, bro? What's up, bro? How's it going? How's it going? It's going good, man. Advocacy day, man. We turning hey, up, man. 2021. Let's do it. Yes, sir. We got the people. We got the people joining now. They logging in, y'all. What's up? What's up? Good. See you with the old school black on. Hey, man. I'm with the old school black here for right now in the office. You know, advocacy day. I had to, you know, had to show, had to show up. I've been out all day. People saying what's pure for, so had to make sure we represent promotion in the best way. Yeah, man. Advocacy day is on the way. I've been seeing posts going around. Um, teams are uh, excited about what they're advocating for, providing awareness. So that's that's cool. We've been on it all week, especially with uh, college college um, college acceptance week. So that's been huge. Hey, we got a, we got a few more surprises, so we're gonna start kicking off with us. We got a few more surprises. We got a few people in the in the room, so I think I think it would be a good little time to, to open up the floor, get the conversation started. So, uh, a welcome, folks. My name is uh, Mike Farone. I am rocking with the man, the myth, the legend, Cornelius Williams. Uh, we are two of a crew of Peer Four coaches who are serving students across the country. Um, but today we're not here to so much talk about ourselves, but really talk about advocacy day, something that has been on the heart of the Pair Forward organization, really making sure we are addressing um, racial and social justice equity issues. We want to make sure that we're bringing light to these conversations. Um, and so today we're going to start off really making sure that we are engaging first with our coaches to learn about what's going on in our landscape, but then also possibly talk to some students about what's going on in their background and how does uh, social justice and advocacy and what does it mean and matter to them. So, C, you want to break down who you are, where you're from? Give us, give the folks a little something about yourself. All right, man. So I reign from the great city of Miami, Florida, uh, 305, and um, I'm originally uh, went to Miami Northwestern High School where I was okay. uh, impacted by the program, and so. A very young age. I'm a middle child for those who don't know. So <laughs> I had to learn about self advocacy at a very, very, very young age. And um, so uh, advocacy is something that I'm aware of and have been practicing for a long time. But um, until I, you know, kind of to my older years uh, as a young adolescent, is when I started to realize advocacy on a larger front and what that meant for communities, people underrepresented, and for pretty much any cause that you can think of. There's been individuals who advocated, but there's a process to how you advocate. And so we're glad to talk to y'all about that today and kind of get in. All right, so let's let's get into it. So so help us understand um, from your life experience, when was the first time you realized advocacy was something that was important to you and what experience led to that? Oh, first time, uh, man, I think I was, like, I can go back to when I was eight years old. Well, it started when I was seven. Um, I wanted to play football. And so I, 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 I had to think about ways to convince my parents to, to let me go on that ride and play football. And um, it really, it really, it really um, took time for me to grow as a young adult. It wasn't until I was nine or 10. So I was able to convince them and say, you know, well, I'm, I'm getting to that age now where I want to explore the things that I like. And so I think uh, once I figured out how to, advocate but also how to persuade mm. um, and use my okay. persuasion with my words uh was when was when i first found out about it but uh aside from that like first time really advocating for a larger cause was in uh 2012 um with trayvon martin foundation mm. right so advocating on that that on that front there as he, he was my friend and so organizing individuals yeah. on my college campus and uh, doing speeches and just advocating for um, justice in that sense. And so that was when it really the skills that I learned growing up kind of hit me um, for a forefront for a global thing, which now impacted the world. So, right. Yeah, hey, I'm I'm appreciative of the fact that you brought that up. Right. Um, we talked about 2012. We talked about Trayvon Martin. Um, almost 10 years later. Right. Sometimes folks can often say things don't feel different. Although there have been many strides from the examples you gave, but even in your own community, nationally, even globally, mm -hmm. to really raise awareness on what actually the importance of it. Um, can you, as a coach, talk about 
your experience with students and how you utilize or how you brought to the forefront the power of advocacy um, and the tools that you were mentioning in the process that you have brought up in the beginning that has been fruitful, helpful to really drive what students experience in this year, 2021, post-pandemic. Not post-pandemic, we're still in a pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what does that look like? What has that been like for you? Oh, man. So it's just really the kids, the students this year, um, <clears throat> like myself and others, they are aware of the power that they have. And so I think really just um, giving them, once you, once you allow the peer leaders to have um, a stage, Mm. Right. They understand yeah. the power of social media. They understand the power of uh, of a unit. And so what I do is just really try to guide them and, 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 and make sure that they understand that the words that they say, the things that they do are impactful. And this year, it's, it's been it's been huge, man. Uh, Bowie High School yesterday just ran an event for, uh, to prevent prison to school, school to prison pipeline. Ooh. Students who are not going to college figure out what they're going okay. to do. Student High School yesterday ran an event around mental awareness, mm. right? And so, uh, Croom, Croom High School, uh, in the beginning of the year, shared, like our vocational schools in Tall Oaks, they did voting drives, right? So, we know how important uh, the election was this year, man. Schools and students and peer leaders hit the ground running, right? right. They understood the power that they have. And so, uh, that's, that, that was huge, man. So, it's just really giving them the tools that they need to succeed because they understand what they right. need to do. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, that, that, that's what it has been like for me as a coach, really, really empowering them to. Got it. Okay. So, so, Let's let's pivot for a moment, right? And I, I appreciate you kind of digging into what the schools have done. There's there's an essence, um, there's there's an essence that you you really tapped into, and I, I think it, it often goes overlooked. I and mean, your schools already kind of um, have been working on that, but around mental health. So this month's mental mental health mental health awareness, mm -hmm. right? Um, what does and how does let me, let me say how does mental health awareness and advocacy go hand in hand? Ooh, how do they go hand in hand? I think they go hand in hand by mental health is something that um, is key to our full body, mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. um, and I think with awareness, I mean, with advocacy, um, being able to advocate is a sign of mental health um, or is a, it's a good sign of mental health, being able to know how to advocate. But I think they go hand in hand because... Um, being able to advocate for what one needs and understanding right. what one else needs outside of you. So it, it, it's, it's about the four agreements, like social, emotional, um, like your self-awareness versus social awareness and awareness of others. And so if you can step outside of who you are and what you need, right, it just makes that you're mentally aware of your surrounding, your community. And so if you're able to advocate for that, um, I think that's that that's one way that it connects with me. So mental mm -hmm. mental health awareness is being able to, you know, function right and be at a good space individually, personally, but also how do you bring that same peace understanding to others? And so mm -hmm. I like I like that second piece of bringing that peace understanding to others. Um, given that statement, though, for you, brother, what what is self advocacy means, and what has that looked like for your students and on yourself? So you could you could take it either way. Yeah, uh, well, for my students, self-advocacy, man, it's, it's, it's been huge this year. Uh, teams have, uh, Largo High School, uh, they have took the self-advocacy route um, because they know that there is not equity in um, technology advances for their teams, for their peers. And so what they have done is we, we, did, we did what's called a, um, we did a, basically we looked at all these different problems, a, a, a problem analysis. And they said, from their standpoint, what's the issue that I have? Because I know if I'm having it, my friends are having it. And right. so uh, what they did was look at the equity issue within technology um, okay. availability for students. And so that was self-advocating for me, although they're advocating for other individuals. And what they did was they provided resources for students to reach out, right? Although there was a large system at the district level, they took it down to the student level. So they had students emailing them, reaching out, and things of that nature. And so 
Um, I think when when that self advocacy piece this year uh, was really huge for students because they're in it, right? Not like me. I'm a coach. I'm kind of on the outside. I'm a, I'm, a, right. I'm off the field. Like, <laughs> right. Those students on the field can see what on the field, and so I think when they advocate for their friends, it's also a self advocation. So yeah, yeah, that's that's that's, that's 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 where it stands. That's 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 insightful. As as a participant in the game, as a participant in the reality of what's happening in their school community, they look inward and say, "These are the struggles I'm having. Who else can actually benefit from the resources that I need? I need, and, and many others will." Okay, thank you, see. Hey, look, before I let you go, brother, I want to, I want to, you, you a man of many words, and I feel, I feel like it would, I would be remiss to to not let you. Uh, share with the folks anything that you just feel that's on your heart in the moment. You feel like, yo, like this is the one thing I want to. Oh man, so just just for our advocacy day, one thing that I would advocate for. You said, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Can you hear me? Yep, you good to go. All right, so so the one thing I want to leave with everybody is, um, I would advocate that you donate to a nonprofit of your choice um, because in this pandemic. Uh, we have celebrated our first responders who very much so deserved mm -hmm. it. We celebrated our students who have been in the in the in the, in the weeds of everything. Um, but I do think there is space for us to celebrate our nonprofits who have been um, rallying behind all of our individuals, all of our students, mm -hmm. in, in our community. Right? Without nonprofits, uh, I think it'll be a real tough dire situation for us as Americans and across the world. And so if you could, if you can, donate to your favorite nonprofit, donate to a nonprofit in your community um, to help them continue, right? Because as we are struggling as, as citizens, our companies, our organizations are also in that same fight. And so if you can spare anything, donate to a nonprofit this year and uh, make sure it goes towards a good cause. So that's, that's all I got to say, Mike. Hey, listen, hey, hey, th thank you, brother. That's, that's, that's what I got to say. Thank you, thank you. Now, so on a serious note, uh, see, you are always an amazing man to speak with. Um, I hope that folks that are with us and that will see this later have the ability to really take in the words that you were sharing because you were dropping some gems. Um, but another piece of this conversation, not only is it touch base with our coaches, um, but it's a touch base with our students. So, see, I will see you later, good brother. Uh, and I'm going to bring the next, right, the next be good. on up. Take care, man. You. All right. All right. So, beautiful people, we have uh, one other person I would love to bring into the room in the conversation. Um, she's a rock star. I'm going to go ahead and, and get her invited. See, so she'll, she'll jump in um, and we'll, we'll get this conversation continuing. Yeah. Okay. I see, I see some folks in the room. Okay. Yelly, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So, hey, I'm super excited to talk to you, right? Um, you just heard from Cornelius uh, C. Will. Now, I, I want the people to know who you are, but I feel like I would do an injustice by doing your introduction. Tell us, who are you, where are you from, what high school you go to, what city you rep in, your background and all. Um, so, my name is Yeli Mateo. I go to um, Thurgood Marshall Academy. I'm a senior. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm from the Dominican Republic, but you know, I'm the okay. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, so talk to us, um, first about your experience with Peer Forward, and then we will get into the heartbeat of the conversation today around advocacy. Um, basically, I really had a good time. This is my first year actually in Peer mm -hmm. Forward, and I really liked it due to the fact that I met like new people that I really like. Um, also, because it has been building up my, like, communication skills and my leadership skills also, yeah. Okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so you're a dope leader, right? I know that. The people now know that. Talk to us about what advocacy means to you, though. Um, basically, um, supporting um, each other, you know, in many different ways, uh, you know. And like y'all was saying about mental health and things like that, so that's how you know that you're you're in the right path and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you're on the right path. I appreciate that. That's insightful. Now, what has advocacy meant to you, or how has it played out for you um, in this last year? From everything from uh, social justice to inequities with students in the educational process, from dreamers. I mean, just the, the full gambit right in this this year of 
uh, the pandemic and COVID, what has uh, advocacy meant to you and how has that been lived out in your life in any ways? Um, well, there has a lot of things that has been happening, as you can see in the news. It's like uh, a lot of people, there's like um, a lot of racial things going on. So me, you know, me supporting those people that um, have been going through this, that have, you know, that plays advocacy, also supporting like my family throughout this mm. pandemic. Yeah, so... Nice. I appreciate I appreciate bringing up family because that's that's yeah. one often piece that we miss in the conversation. We talk about larger communities, but not our our folks at home. Now, you know, a, a little a little birdie told me something that I think is just really cool and really insightful that we should probably talk about. You know what I, you know what I'm gonna bring up? The social change. Oh, thing. social change. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because you because you co facilitated something. You know what I mean? You a high school student facilitator. You know what I mean? You doing my job. So so talk to me. What was the social change day? What was your role and, and how did that play out? So basically, um, me and a few of my classmates, we basically made like a little presentation to talk about how um, people of color um, have played out like um, what they have um, done to the community to help um, make a change. We also did like many ways um, how mentoring could make a change and things okay. like that. Also, we brought in Al Sharpton. And he talked about his journey and things like that. And that he was um basically telling us to speak about um, you know, to speak about what we're passionate about and mm -hmm. things like that to help make a change. Right, nice. Now, yeah. how was that experience for you? How did it make you feel? What were some thoughts you had going into it after and even during? Um, I really loved it. It was like I I learned a lot of things that like I didn't know about before. Mm. It made me like wake up to the fact that um, we actually have done a lot of things to get to the point to where we are, and how our generation is like really important for the next one. Also, yes, thank, thank you. Okay, so yeah. so before we go, right? I think I think I, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with Cornelius with you. Is there anything? Is there one thing that's just on your heart? You're like, Mike. I'd be mad if you let me leave here and I didn't have a chance to say this uh, regarding self-advocacy, regarding mental health, um, regarding the social change day that you participated in. What, what's one thing you want to leave with the folks? Um, I don't really have anything. I just don't like the fact that I didn't get like my real high school experience, well, my senior mm. high school experience. So that was something that, you know, made me feel sad during this pandemic. So, yeah. And 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 you now have opportunity not only on this platform but even after to, to advocate for that. So Yelly, I just want to say a thank you for being a gem and deciding to hop on and have this conversation with us. Um, you're gonna be a rock star. We're gonna we're gonna definitely give you your flowers now as you go ahead and, and cross that stage in, in, a, in about six weeks or so. Uh, so with, without further ado, Yelly, I want to say thank you to everyone on the live that has joined us. We also want to say thank you. Please look out for more of our posts regarding uh, Advocacy Day and look out for more information on what Peer Forward is doing, what other organizations are doing to really make sure we are on the forefront of change. Yelly, thank you. Family, thank you. We'll see you all soon. Take care.